Tommy Chong is here. First of all, we're glad you're anywhere. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Let's start <laughs> yeah, with I'm that. I'm still here. Yeah. All right, Tommy, one half of the classic comedy duo Cheech and Chong. Between the records and the movies and the reunion shows, they've been doing it for more than 40 years. Yeah, my dog ate my stash, man. Am I driving okay, man? I think we're parked, man. You mellow? Yeah. Feels good, don't it, man? Yeah. <laughs> Open up the door, it's Dave. Who? Dave, D-A-V-E. Dave? Yeah, Dave. Dave's not here. Not here. <laughs> Dave's not here. Just a little look, a little look. You know, I realized listening to you guys, you had like a generation of uh, guys running around sounding like you. Yeah. You realize that. A couple yeah. generations, yeah. actually. A couple, yeah, a couple yeah, right? generations. It feels like more than that. Well, we're so glad to see you. Yeah, so glad nice to, to be see here. you. How are you feeling? We have yeah, to I'm feeling great. All right, I'm let's, let, great. let's, the reason we ask, you had uh, prostate cancer a few years ago. Yeah, right. have, still have. Still have, in remission. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now you have. Uh, yeah, uh, rectal, rectal cancer. Related? Yeah. Is it really no, like, apparently not. That, uh, apparently not. I look at uh, the body, you know, like a car. You know, I'm an old car now, mm -hmm. and I got a little rust in the exhaust pipe. That's about it. But you're you're in your 70s, right? Yeah. 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 Almost 80. Almost really. Getting close. Getting yeah. close. Now you've been. I know you've been really vocal about how you're using, like, even the cannabis suppositories, right? Yes. And d how has that helped, or do you think that's hurt? Oh no. It, it all helps. It all definitely helps. helps. Well, first of all, uh, it's n when you do suppositories, you don't get the head high. You know, you get a little butt high, but no head high. <laughs> okay. Well, wh whatever that is. Well, I'm not sure what that <laughs> oh, is. Oh, it's good. Butt high is good, man. Because <laughs> you can still think. I, I know people who graduated <laughs> from butt high, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> no. Uh, but no, no, the cannabis oil is, is, I think cannabis oil has really kept me from uh, well, it kept me healthy, mm -hmm. kept me young, you know, kept me on Dancing with the Stars. You, you were know. amazing. You brought yeah. your swag to that. Yeah. Did you, well, had you danced before then? Uh, you know, I learned how to dance salsa. You know, I had to, you know, because my wife was a salsa dancer. So we're watching you here. The, you, the state of your health then was what? I had cancer. All right, at that point. I think, I think probably, it, you know, this is my own opinion, the stress of the show probably uh, brought, brought, brought it out. And it is, stress, it is stressful. Oh, totally. Not just fun, it's stressful. Seven days a week, mm -hmm. rehearsals, like four or five hours a day rehearsals. So did you know your cancer, like had you been getting your colonoscopies? Did you? Or no, you for three years. That was, that was a problem. Yeah, but they give you uh, propofol, I'm surprised. <laughs> Didn't want to do it. <laughs> now, uh, Tommy, on a serious note here, uh, you have always been in the forefront of saying, let's legalize marijuana. Yes. It's a ridiculous thing. Yes. If marijuana, if we had started out another way, marijuana would be legal and alcohol wouldn't be, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What do your doctors say when you talk to them? About Every doctor, the straight doctors and the hip doctors, they all, the straight doctors, they don't discourage it. Mm -hmm. I tell them I'm, I'm treating the cancer with, with marijuana and they go, okay. Let's see what happens, you know. Uh, the, the, the cancer, I mean, the marijuana doctor, like there's a Dr. Frankel. He, he's been researching and he's, he's one of the top uh, marijuana doctors in, in, uh, in, in the world, actually. Uh, he encourages the use of the cannabis oil with cancer for a number of reasons, you know. And, and how does the medical profession officially look at this? Officially? Well, it depends. In, in uh, Israel, there's research going where, where they've done great strides. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sandra Gupta did a great uh, show on CNN mm -hmm. where they showed the cannabis oil actually curing a little girl's epilepsy. Mm. But a little so, girl but had yeah, epilepsy. These are episodes, but what about the medical establishment it would say to you what well the medical establishment really don't know mm -hmm. they don't know no more than anybody else knows the medical establishment it, it, when you say establishment the ones that push pharmaceutical uh, the AMA for yes. instance yeah yes. yeah the ones they're, they're way behind the curve you know we we're, they don't even allow marijuana research mm -hmm. the federal government does it so, so I mean, they're they're behind, but we're we're you you know this stuff. The, the people are what we call big pharma it. and the pharmaceutical yep. industry, 
Are they waiting for the total legalization? Do they already have, I don't know what, Pharma's patents? not waiting for anybody. Huh? <laughs> they're no, way no, ahead they're, of the game. Yeah, you know? so they, they're ready to go as a product? As much think? as they can. The United States government tried to patent or did patent marijuana years ago when they made it legal because illegal because the American government knew, at that time knew the medical benefits. And, and, and the reason it was made illegal was pure uh, political, you know, and racist. It's a, marijuana laws are very racist. They're the, probably the only blatant racist law that we have, you know. And, and the reason I say that is before it was called marijuana, it was called hemp. And it was growing all over the world, especially in, in America. There's Hempville, Hempstead, there's hemp towns named after So hemp. people in Long Island who live in Hempstead don't know they live in Marijuana Stead? That's Is that right. what you're saying? That's, That's right. an interesting thought. A lot of them don't. Okay. Uh, it's not like you've dedicated your life to the pursuit of marijuana. But I have. But, <laughs> but you have. <laughs> and, and the interesting thing is that I think most people back in the 70s and early 80s would have thought that you wouldn't be alive now. That's right. That's right. And you've outlasted a lot of those people. Absolutely, because of the, the marijuana. And you think I, I, I'm Like I say, I'm almost 80 years old. Mm -hmm. I still uh, uh, do everything that I did when I was 40. You know, and well, you're everything. confident about, about this prognosis? The doctors feel confident and when you're in there? The doctors are, are very, very confident. With me, it's stage one. It's not that serious. I'm going to treat it, with, like I say, with marijuana. And, and radi chemo and radiation, right? Yeah, and okay. the chemo and the, and the radiation. The, the, the good thing about marijuana, what marijuana does more than anything, it relaxes the mind. It relaxes the, the anxiety. And when you relax anything, then things get done. Mm -hmm. You know, it relaxes the immune system, so the immune system will 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 take over. You know, because we don't when we have illnesses and that. You know, the doctors can only do so much. Doctors are like mechanics; they can fix things that are broken, but they can't really keep you from getting the disease unless you you treat. Uh, your body like like a car and you make sure you know what you're putting into it, you know, like good nutrition exercise and Marijuana. All right, so do it. we have to go. You're gonna come back uh, next year after you're on so you think you can dance Again. after all of this Tommy, I will good to see you Tommy Chong. Thank you very much